Oxford University scientists have been working on perovskite solar cells that are nearly 150 times thinner than the silicon wafers traditionally used in solar panels. And instead of requiring separate panels, these solar cells could be printed onto existing surfaces to capture solar power in many more places than before. But is this a solar technology breakthrough or is this too good to be true? Let's dive into the details and find out. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. Recently, this article was published on the Oxford University website, and it describes a solar energy breakthrough that scientists at the university have been working on that allows solar cells, these perovskite solar cells, to actually be coated or in a sense printed on everyday materials. One of the really unique aspects of this technology is the fact that it is so incredibly thin. As this article makes clear, it is nearly 150 times thinner than traditional silicon wafers. With this all in mind, since these solar cells can be coated on a large number of materials and since they are so thin, I can imagine a future where there is solar everywhere and you really can't tell because it's so thin and it just coats all kinds of products and produces power in places where power wasn't generated before. This has the potential to be a huge breakthrough in the industry. Now, another really good thing about this technology is the fact that it is extremely efficient. It's not as if this technology is inferior when it comes to efficiency. As this particular article does state, using a pioneering technique developed in Oxford, which stacks multiple light absorbing layers into one solar cell, they have harnessed a wider range of the light spectrum, allowing more power to be generated from the same amount of sunlight. Specifically, these solar cells have been independently verified to have an efficiency of around 27%, which compared to the most efficient panels on the market right now is very solid. For example, I found this list on cleanenergyreviews.info and it lists the top 10 most efficient residential solar panels in 2024. You can see there at the top of that list is the SunPower Maxion 7, which has a max efficiency of 24.1%. But more excitingly, it looks like beyond that 27% that they're achieving right now, it looks like there is potential in the future to actually exceed efficiencies of 45%. The more efficient you can make a solar cell, the smaller that the solar array has to be to generate the same amount of wattage. So this is huge. The 27% is great now, but with the potential to be more than 45% in the future, this is really exciting technology. Another exciting thing about this technology is it looks like it has the potential to be very inexpensive to manufacture, coming in as this humanprogress.org article states at a projected 10 cents per watt. And this is exciting that this technology could actually be affordable. Now, I do want to quickly talk about what is meant by perovskite solar cells. What are perovskites? Well, I found this article on energy.gov, which describes specifically that the name perovskite comes from the nickname for their crystal structure. Furthermore, as is stated in this article on perovskite-info.com, the term perovskite and perovskite structure are often used interchangeably. This article then goes on to make clear that while there is a mineral called perovskite, a perovskite structure actually refers to something that has the same crystal structure as the mineral perovskite. So when you see the term perovskite solar cells, we're not actually talking about them containing the mineral perovskite. However, they instead have a perovskite structure. So when it comes to some of the specific materials used in these solar cells, I came across this information on Wikipedia, which actually states, quote, a perovskite solar cell is a type of solar cell that includes a perovskite structured compound, most commonly a hybrid organic, inorganic, lead or tin halide based material as the light harvesting active layer. Perovskite materials such as methyl ammonium lead halides and all inorganic cesium lead halide are cheap to produce and simple to manufacture. Now, so far I've talked about all the good news, all the great things about this technology, and there's a lot of exciting potentials with this technology. However, it's not all great because there are some limits to commercialization with this technology. And the reality is it's not quite ready for prime time. Unfortunately, as is mentioned in this energy.gov article, these perovskite solar cells actually have problems with stability. As this article states, quote, 
Perovskites can decompose when they react with moisture and oxygen or when they spend extended time exposed to light, heat, or applied voltage. That really doesn't make them very promising right now because of course you're going to put your solar panels out to collect sun which is going to generate heat and they're going to get rained upon etc. So this is a huge limiting factor for this technology. Obviously researchers are trying to work around this and make this technology work but that's a huge downside for something that seems so exciting. So obviously these perovskite solar cells are not commercially viable yet because they're not going to last very long at all. As compared to, for example, silicon-based solar panels, which right now a good silicon-based solar panel usually has a warranty of around 25 years. And the reality is these solar panels, these good quality solar panels, most of the time will probably outlive that 25 years. It just means that they'll be less efficient. So there's going to have to be a lot of work with these perovskite solar cells in order for them to actually be commercially viable. And I hope this actually happens. But nonetheless, beyond that problem, if that wasn't big enough, it looks like this technology is also difficult to manufacture. In this energy.gov article, it states, quote, Perovskite solar cells are thin film devices built with layers of materials either printed or coated from liquid inks or vacuum deposited. Producing uniform high-performance perovskite material in a large-scale manufacturing environment is difficult and there is a substantial difference in small area cell efficiency and large area module efficiency. Beyond that, there's actually environmental concerns around these solar cells because they are manufactured, these perovskite solar panels are manufactured using lead. Nonetheless, this technology does open up the possibility of a hybrid cell, a hybrid between a perovskite and a traditional silicon-based solar cell, which would allow the perovskite material, which captures a bigger spectrum of light, a broader spectrum of light, to capture more energy in combination with a traditional silicon cell, which could improve the efficiency of that cell to somewhere around 33% according to this energy.gov article. With that being said, while perovskite solar cells are definitely not ready for prime time and they have some huge drawbacks, it's definitely a technology that I'm going to continue watching. If scientists can figure out how to make these perovskite solar cells last 20 years or so, then I believe this technology will be extremely viable and once again could have the potential to virtually replace the silicon-based solar panels that we have right now. A future with these solar cells coating all kinds of surfaces out in the real world, lowering our dependence on other sources of energy would be really exciting and is a future that I'm looking forward to. I just don't know how long it's going to take and if it's going to be perovskite that makes that happen. Do let me know what you think about this technology in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.